my name is Daniel Berman and I work at Nesta Challenges and I head up the, our global health group. The global challenges of anti, uh, antibiotic resistance are um, related to the fact that it's normal that resistance builds over time to antibiotics. Uh, and because of overuse and misuse, and also because of a lack of new antibiotics, we're really facing a global crisis. And when I say crisis, we're getting to the point in some countries where uh, having a, a cesarean section or taking chemotherapy, which obviously suppresses the immune system, can be life-threatening. Uh, to be very specific, in, in, in India, uh, in an oncology uh, hospital in Chennai, 30% of the patients are facing uh, superbugs or multi-drug resistance that are on chemotherapy. Developing uh, antibiotics and developing uh, rapid diagnostic tests are both essential. Uh, if we only focus on identifying and developing new antibiotics, we risk getting into the same um, problems that we have today a few years later. Um, and ultimately, the, 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 the factors that will really make the biggest difference is more precise use of antibiotics, which means you need to know when to use them. So some of the tests that are being developed um, in the Longitude Prize competition are looking at um, identifying whether an infection is viral or bacterial, so to clearly know whether you need an antibiotic or not. Other ones are looking at susceptibility of antibiotics because today, since it takes 48 hours to, to culture a bacteria, uh, oftentimes patients are given a first antibiotic and it's only 48 hours later that you realize that uh, the antibiotic's not working. And that is um, basically fostering resistance and making the situation worse. So basically we need to, um, you could say, uh, slow demand of the use of antibiotics by testing and only using them when it's necessary to use them. The ideal rapid diagnostic test has to have certain attributes and the Longitude Prize actually has defined what those attributes well, should be. And one of them is accuracy. So a test is not going to have a, a huge impact unless it's highly accurate. And what I mean is that it needs to identify almost all of the infections. Um, and it, it can't be, for example, 80% effective. Another thing is that uh, taking a blood sample and sending it off to the lab, is, is it, that, that whole process delays um, the decision of what antibiotic to use and leads to a situation where you give an antibiotic um, right away and it's only 48 hours later that you know uh, whether it's, it, it's working or not when you get the lab test back. And so we need tests that are fast. Uh, and at Longitude Prize, we say with, that we need a test within 30 minutes. Also, a test needs to be affordable. Antibiotics are really inexpensive, um, especially the older ones that are used for, for most infections. And we're not saying that the rapid test has to be as cheap as antibiotics but it has to be affordable to systems like the NHS. Point of care tests can basically change the paradigm. So today what we're doing is we're trying to reduce the volume of antibiotics that we use by um, in, informing physicians and nurses that are making prescribing decisions about when to use an antibiotic, so basically bring down the volume. And that's had some success, but the success is limited. So although in the um, UK we've reduced the uh, volume by 17% in the last four years, we st still see a 9% increase in resistance. So what that means is it's too blunt of an instrument to just try to reduce the volume of antibiotics. We actually need rapid tests that can tell us 
which antibiotics to use and when to use antibiotics. At the Longitude Prize, we have a lot of experience working with innovators and inventors. So uh, at, its, at the height, we, we were working with 250 startups, medium sized and larger companies that were uh, competing to win the Longitude Prize. And with all of that experience, we realized that the market is still broken because remember that the Longitude Prize pays out 8 million pounds to, to one winner, but it, uh, the grants that we give to finance the work of developing a test are small, they're just seed grants. And so what we need is, we need both what we call push and pull mechanisms. So push is if, if, if we decide, and we have decided that the policy is we absolutely need rapid diagnostic tests, then the development needs to be subsidized with grants. And there, there are not actually enough grant grants available to fund the development of products um, because historically that is, has, has happened through private investing but it's not, we're not going to get there unless there's increased public investing. And then on the pool side actually creating a market so when a test gets onto the market will the NHS and in other countries um, will health systems and private markets buy the test and that means that you have to look at the value of the tests to slowing down resistance, to um, reducing uh, hospital stays, to reducing repeat visits. So from a poly policy perspective, it's really critical to ring fenced funds to make sure that funds are, are available to buy diagnostics um, uh, that will basically address this crisis of resistance of antibiotics. And, uh, uh, NHS England is taking an important first step because they're doing what they call the Netflix model to buy antibiotics. So rather than paying by pill, they'll pay to cover um, everyone in NHS England. And um, they're actually looking at paying more for antibiotics, um, but the contracts will not be based on the volume but rather on um, availability of an antibiotic. So a company that develops antibiotics will be sure, because they have, they'll have a contract written, about how much money they'll be getting each year. And this is a win-win for industry, uh, for NHS, and also for the public, uh, because this means that we'll only use the new antibiotics uh, when they're absolutely necessary. But we'll be paying a premium because of their value uh, to, um, to basically slowing resistance. So in terms of lessons from other countries, uh, there's, there's, there's two that stand out. Um, so for example, a country like Sweden, they have um, considerably lower antibiotic resistance than we have here in the UK. And it's because they've gotten out the message to the public that uh, antibiotics should be used uh, sparingly. Now, we've made a lot of progress in the UK, um, but there's more progress uh, to be made because we still hear from GPs that patients are demanding antibiotics when they don't need them. And as we know, um, uh, consultants only have seven minutes to meet with patients, and sometimes they just don't have the time um, to, to explain and to kind of win the argument. Um, and so it's really important that we continue building on public awareness. And for an individual, if you're taking antibiotics when you don't need them, it can also have a negative effect on your own microbiome. So your, your own um, good bacteria, you could say. Um, uh, you don't want to be killing good bacteria when, when you don't uh, need antibiotics. And, and so I think um, there, Th that's, a, that's a good e uh, example um, uh, of, of how we can change. Um, and on the Indian side, um, they've taken a, a very important step on uh, the animal side, because as we know, um, there are antibiotics used in animal feed as a growth promoter. So one of the uh, last resort antibiotics, colistin, has been banned in animal feed in India. And that was a, an important step. In the UK, it's, uh, the, the use of cholestin has dramatically 
reduced through a voluntary ban. Um, but I think the point there in terms of public policy is the Indian government took a strong decision um, uh, which actually took some courage. And I think we, we need to take hard decisions because uh, if we don't, then things like having a cesarean section or a joint replacement um, will be really, really dangerous because of superbugs. I think um, what we would like to see in five or 10 years um, on the antibiotic side, although the pipeline has um, started to have new compounds that are being developed, it's not at a volume um, that's fit for purpose. So we really do need um, uh, many more antibiotics and it's not going to happen just through the private market. This is gonna take uh, government intervention, especially by, by funding. Um, and then another thing I'd like to see is that here in the UK, uh, we can afford to pay for uh, rapid diagnostic tools that we hope will come through the Longitude Prize and, and other mechanisms. But uh, there's going to be a need uh, to subsidize this for developing countries. We already subsidize AIDS, TB, malaria, and vaccines. And we, we absolutely need a change in international policy so that there's money available to buy diagnostic tests um, for lower and middle income countries. Because if uh, resistance continues to rise um, in places like India um, and, and, and other developing countries, uh, it, it, it's one um, planet and we know with the movement of people, we really need to address this on an international level.